channel, but dude, I glanced at this trailer today in between classes and this is beyond my wildest dreams. I thought we were just gonna clean this game up a little bit, put some new character models in there. Dude, so many cutscenes are voiced now. The running around, like the gameplay aspects are phenomenal. Uh, you're gonna see some stuff that I'm gonna highlight on and show to you and kind of realize what is different about this from the original game that I'm that I'm seeing. But dude, this is just uh, I can't wait to get into this because it's gonna be something so sick. It's really gonna be phenomenal. So I'm gonna pull up this uh, gameplay thing. We're gonna get into it right now, and I'm gonna start breaking things down and just uh, basically having the time of my so life. I just returned from London. And I have okay. some juicy gameplay. The long-awaited PSP classic, Crisis Core, is here. So this dude only talks in the beginning, but from scratch, very excited dude, for this look game. at you may notice this movement. There's a move in this gameplay. The movement is insane, right? In the and you can also PSP rotate release. the camera, so which is something you had to do with the triggers the in the PlayStation yeah. Portable and, uh, version. Yeah, hey guys, watching. Hope you guys oh my god, video. dude! Thank you for supporting it, and yeah, enjoy. Look at how smooth it is. He's doing a assault twister there. Look at that, you can see the health of the enemies now. The health of the enemies. Dude, I remember in hard mode, I would be hammering these dudes in the back. And I would just hope that they would die. Man, the whole interface. Dude, look at this movement. Holy shit. And there's also an option where my face is. You can push down on the D-pad to heal. So he used a potion there. He used that option. God, this is insane. So I kind of want to go back and look at that battle again. God, I can't I believe this. So hang on, let me just let me see the whole uh, thing yeah, start up again. Watching, hope you guys enjoy the That's important to me. No PSP release. So check out that in the video. Let me know in the comments if you guys. See it. Okay, activating combat mode. This has been completely redone. All right, let me just uh, let's just play it back a little slower. I just am speeding it up, right? Let's do like 75. Look at this man. Oh my god, this these are completely redone. The Butai soldier, this enemy. This enemy, I understand why they completely redid it because um this enemy is definitely gonna be showing up in rebirth if we go to Wutai. Does that make sense? So up here you can see some new controls. Guard is R1. Okay, so in the original, this was a triangle button. You would hold down the triangle button. Dodge is X? Dodge was a... Uh, okay, so in the original, attack was square. Dodge... No, 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 I'm sorry. Attack was the X button. Dodge was the square button. Guarding was the triangle button. Target lock? There was no target lock. You would move up to the enemy uh, whenever you know you got close enough within their proximity. The closest enemy to Zack is the one he would target. So now you can actually pick your target and switch between them, which is amazing. Uh, down here they have, you can't see it, but it's a classic item menu. Yeah, okay, very, very cool. Uh, these new portraits are here. I saw this in the trailer. Um, brand new character portraits for the DMW. Has your SP up here. I think the SP is tracking your experience in the game. So when this reaches a certain point, you level up. And so all these events in the DMW are gonna happen uh, randomly. But the only thing that isn't random is whether your Materia and Zack levels up. That is never random. But everything else, like these attacks and these buffs that you get, are 100% random. 100% random. So here. Uh, okay, let's not like watch this here. This is at 75% speed. So yeah, you can see the health of the enemies. I was just talking about this, right? Dude, playing this game on hard mode back in the day, the enemies had twice the health, and this is so cool. This is like something that they almost brought in from Remake, right? You got the little health under the thing. So now you know how much it's gonna take to kill this dude, and playing it on hard mode will be way more enjoyable. Way more because, you know, they'll have more health, but you'll feel like you're getting somewhere, and you'll feel like you're gonna be making that progress. All right, so let's actually speed this back up to normal and put the sound on. And yeah, enjoy. Got you. So yeah, here, Assault Twister. That was in his hotkey. Some of the moves have been completely redone. 
Like, I saw earlier today when I was watching this on my phone that he has, like, a Blizzaga blade. Oh, and this is cool. So, uh, these buffs that the DMW gives you, it used to be that you would just see it right here in the corner. And now, front and center, they're telling you, hey, guess what? Like, this is one of your temporary buffs right now. So, yeah, no AP, no MP, you know, no damage is sometimes one of them. It's really, really sick. And this is cool, too, man. All this remake stuff from the HUD is in here, your SP, your gill, that's, oh, this is like beyond my wildest dreams. And God, look at the movement. It was so stiff and not fluid in the original game. God, this is so cool. And yeah, that option to just heal yourself without going into the menu. And this is new too, dude. This is Yuffie, right? This was 100% text in the old game. Now this whole thing is voiced. This is absolutely bonkers, dude. Yuffie's like, what, eight years old in this game? So it's seven years before seven. So she's nine. She's nine years old. Can you hear it all right? God, dude, I cannot wait to play this game. It's so much more than I thought it would be. So now they're saying that Yuffie actually made that sound with her mouth. Shoo, shoo, shoo. I'm watching this trailer with the Japanese and the English sub because this has more of before the fight with the monsters. So that's why I'm watching it. And you also get to see the Yuffie cutscene. Back to work. God, I can't even get over just the movement. Yeah, IGN and all these people uploaded stuff, but it was uh, only this fight. So I wanted to see like some standard uh, encounters with the Wutai soldiers and things like that. Damn, so they highlight the area you're in now. All right, there's a very important change of the combat system that I saw earlier today. I want to make sure I pause this. Activating combat mode. All right. Okay, so this is huge. This was one of the biggest problems I had. Yeah, I think this is one of the biggest problems I had with the original Crisis Core battle system, okay? Or boss battles. So enemies would use these attacks where they were unblockable, they were undodgeable, you couldn't do anything except try and kill the enemy as fast as you could. They were like these cutscene attacks. So they call them in this game the enemy abilities. And now what they're saying is this gauge is going to be at 100% when these guys are going to start casting this attack. And if you get this gauge down, let's say you get it down to 50%, it'll do 50% less damage. You get it down to 25, it's going to do 25% of the damage it would normally do. And then if you completely deplete this meter, they're not going to do that attack at all. So back in the original PSP, they would just start out the fight and do this cutscene attack, and you had to get hit by it. And this was a huge pain in the ass because when you did missions later on in the game and the enemies were really OP, sometimes it wouldn't even be your fault. They would just start up the battle with this attack and then you just get one-shotted and that was it. That was it, dude. So the fact that they took this into consideration and they changed this for the battle system is amazing. Okay, so if you read it, yeah, you lower the gauge by attacking the enemy, which decreases the ability's impact. Furthermore, you reduce it to zero, you cancel it completely. All right, so I basically had it down. But it's a very, very cool change. So yeah, they start casting it, and when you hit them, you deplete this gauge. You have 50, 25. So he didn't get there in time. Twin Tom a lot. Gonna have to get hit by it. You can skip it now. That's cool. God, this is so insanely good. Look at how fast he is. 
I think due to the PSP's hardware, he wasn't able to move that quickly when they were designing the original. Alright, so there's one of his DMW buffs activating at random. Yeah, and he has his hotkey menu up. So when you hold down a trigger, you know, you'll just be able to access materia attacks or special ability attacks. So he's got Blizzard Fire Cure and Assault Twister on his thing right now. So this is awesome. Okay, alright, alright. This was really cool. And they talked about this like right when the game got announced. So you get these DMW limit break attacks, right? And watch what happens. Watch when this activates. So Angeal, he gets three Angeals, so he gets Rush Assault, right? And look at the triangle prompt. Look at that. So in the original, you had to do this attack when these things lined up. You had to do it no matter what. You did not have a choice. And uh, the problem with this was, is like, yeah, when you're starting the game and at the beginning, it's really, really cool, right? And it's a welcome uh, advantage to be like, all right, sweet, I got a Sephiroth Octa Slash. Yeah, of course, I'll take that free damage against the enemy. But when you get later on in the game, these attacks are not as good DPS as maybe like some of your abilities or maybe some of the other things you've created through Materia Fusion with Zack. So it was kind of a pain in the ass because you'd have to do these attacks. They weren't very strong and you'd have to watch the whole cutscene. So now the game is like, hey, do you want to use it? You have the option. You don't have to. You don't have to watch it. You know, it's completely up to you if you want this advantage. And I think that's really, really cool. So he decides to activate it, and he does the Angeal one. Do you think the 300 missions will be in? Oh yeah, maybe even more. They might even add more, dude. It seems like every time I watch something new about this remaster, remake, whatever it is, it is just redefining this game in a new way. So, there might even be more than 300. God, Square knew that people love this game. God, this is ab this is beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought they would ever see any money in this. Hey, is he gonna interrupt it this time? Oh my god, dude, that is so sick. You get like a... A little Nomura slowdown clash thing when you when you oh my god when you cancel that ability attack that is fucking sick. God, the visuals in this are just out of this world. Oh my god! It goes... I can't believe it. I can't. I'm like secretly crying on the inside. Oh yeah! So, here's another thing with the DMW. I don't know if they'll show it in this trailer. We might have to watch a different one. But essentially, like, when these attacks would happen, a cutscene would go on. And it was completely text, and now it's voiced. It's completely redone. These memories that aren't in, like, the storyline, that are extra content, like whether he was doing a mission with Sephiroth or Angeal, it's completely voiced now. We might have to watch a different, we might have to watch the IGN one, the English dub, to see this. God damn. And his attack animations are different, it's fast, it's fluid. Yeah, sometimes up there it's showing like a little memory, and it did not do that in the PSP. God, that is so sick. Soldier Class Second Zaxx, Mukai Tokoro Tekinesh. Jodekida, Isoi de Ridatsho. Ato Gofun de Bagas. He's telling him you only got five minutes before the bomb goes off in this fortress. Lazar to Togazu, meet the guy. Zach's like, do you see that I'm first class material director with on? You see in this shit? Yeah, this Japanese voice is so sick. Kenichi Suzumura, he's a fucking badass. He's also married to the Aerith actress. Really, really cute.
This is when Angeo shows up. God, dude. That new character model. That's probably like the Roche soldier sword in the that they used to render in this game. God damn. Alright, oh yeah, so this... This doesn't make any sense right here, man. This... Okay, so... This is definitely, like, the same model from Remake. The same Buster Sword from, you know, Remake that they just kind of took the model and they put it in this game. This sword is not supposed to look like this yet. It's not. When Angeal uses it, he uses it that one time, and then he maybe uses it to kind of clash with Angeal one time. But his whole thing is, I don't want to use this sword because, you know, it's important to me. Like, my dad worked his ass off to buy it for me. Like, it's a symbol of my family's honor. I don't ever want to use it. Zack doesn't really end up using it that much. I mean, minus the gameplay. I'm talking plot and canon. But it's not supposed to look banged up like this. It's supposed to look like this when Cloud has it, right? But it's supposed to look really clean during this point of the story. So they kind of, I feel like they kind of got this wrong. But, you know, no big deal, right? They changed the Buster Sword back to the remake model. So it's not the end of the world, right? But, yeah. So... <laughs> Thank you. Is that it then? Oh yeah, they show the Sephiroth thing in Ifrit. So here, you see this right here, the way Angeal has his sword um, hoisted on his back. I guess I'll just use that word, hoisted. Um, him and Zack wear it this way, where the blade is facing down. And the blunt edge is up. So if you pay attention in Remake, uh, Cloud actually wears it the opposing way, where the blade is up, so that when he grabs it and pulls it out, it's ready to, like, hit something. It's ready to slash something. The reason they wear it this way is because if Zack and Angeal decide to use this, since it's such a like, important thing to them, they hit it with the blunt edge. So this game is so into the lore in that sense that they even have these dudes wearing the Buster Sword in the opposite direction of Cloud to show that they don't want to use the prime side of the blade. Like, if they hit a monster with it, they're going to hit it with the blunt edge to cause the least amount of damage to the sword possible. So that's a fun little fact in there. This was text in the original game, I think. Yeah. yeah, if you fight every single encounter, um, basically you do all the exploring that you should do, you get this compliment. I think it actually gets you a bonus, whether it's gill or materia or whatever, so do it. Make sure you uh, take out all the forces. You get a firearm. So, go. Alright, the Genesis copies show up. Activating combat mode. Dude, I'm like sitting here thinking, am I more amped about this than rebirth? Like, holy shit. Hey. 
Yeah, one of the things about Blizzard in this game is, uh, right, you have to, it has a delayed attack. You can only use it kind of like on a big enemy that doesn't move too much. If enemies use it on you, you can definitely dodge it. Kind of similar to Remake, right? Oh, that's cool. Okay, new thing I found. New thing I found. So you saw how he leveled up here? Okay. Okay. So it just hits the triple seven. So once you defeated enough enemies, right? This is not randomized. Your leveling is not randomized. It happens when you gain enough SP or you've defeated enough enemies in battle. So in the original game, they had to stop this and do a whole DMW slot roulette thing. And now, without interrupting your battle at all, your Materia and Zack are going to level up just during the battle. And that is so much better than what they did in the original. God, just the way the battle ends. Dude, there's a Zack Play Arts Kai uh, Crisis Core one with this sword. It's on the Square Enix site, and I'm like, looking pretty good. Damn, they made Angeal look even older in this version. Angeal's only 25 years old. Him and, yeah, him, Sephiroth, and Genesis are like 25. I think Zack's about 16, 18 around? I think he's 16 in this game, in the beginning. So now it's gonna go to the Ifrit battle. So this is being played on a PS5. Completely new HUD. Okay, come on, let me see this. Alright, your stats are here. Everything Zach 7 where you are. Uh, very, very similar to PSP, right? Yeah, you don't have to visit a shop. You can access the shop at any time in the menu. It's one of the great things. All your text messages, you can get anything from Yuffie or Cloud or other people. And then the missions tab, DMW. This is to check if, uh, you know, when you've done missions and you've acquired certain summons or characters or progressed through the story, um, whether you filled the whole thing out or not. And Materia Fusion is back. Very cool feature. Um, allows you to strengthen your Materia um, with passive attributes, dude. It's it's really sick. Once you just kind of figure it out, it, it seems complicated, but it's not. It's not, but okay, awesome. <laughs> Music is completely redone. Oh yeah, and I saw this on Max Dude's stream. When he was, uh, not his stream, his reaction to the Crisis Core trailer. There's now material loadouts. Yeah, you see it here. Set one. So no more, like, constantly switching it. Which is not a, not really an issue in Crisis Core because you only control Zack. Like, it's not, um, right? It's not like you're doing the, the, what is it, the drum? Hojo's lab, right? Okay, we gotta switch back to Aerith and Tifa. We gotta switch back to Cloud and Barrett and back to Aerith and Tifa again. So, um, you know, they have sets, which is good because uh, certain missions are gonna require you to use certain materia that is more advantageous to other enemies, right? So it is it is a welcome option. Uh, hopefully it'll be in Rebirth. I can't confirm that, but it would be a welcome change to Rebirth if uh, they added materia sets in it. Yeah, this dude knows he's fighting Ifries. They put on Blizzard Blade. So this is the boss battle theme in uh, Crisis Core. The metal rendition of those who fight further. Activating combat mode. God, he has a blizzard blade attack. 
It wasn't that cool in the original, man. It had a lot of startup. Look at that weakness. They block this. No, you move so fast in this version, yeah, you can just outrun it. So now he's trying to do Hellfire. Yeah, we kind of want him to do this so we can see it. It's going to be a CGI FMV. This is brand new. Completely different Ifrit, the one from Remake. You know, green Ifrit. Yeah, you gotta you gotta stay away from him. This guy's not doing bad, I'm not saying that, but Ifrit, he his whole thing is he stays on you the whole time. Look at this, right? He's very, very fast. He doesn't give you a break. He can use Octa Slash. You're actually not supposed to get this attack until after this fight. Because you have to meet Sephiroth to get the attack. You have to meet him in the game. And he hasn't met him yet. Blizzard does so much damage. You can feel the hype when you that thing hits and it does 600 something damage to the. Oh my god. I need this now. Dude, I need that, like, Japan only $300 edition. I want that. I want that so bad. Him again? Oh shit, he didn't get it out. But you can skip it, you can just take the damage. You're gonna watch the whole thing again? Yeah. No lock on? There is a lock on, and you can switch targets, I think. Yeah, it should say it in the battle in the top right. Yeah, target lock is R3. Yeah. What's so sick is they brought the guy back who did the soundtrack for this game, and he recomposed the tracks. This is one of my favorite video game soundtracks of all time, dude. Oh, there's blood on the sword now. Oh no, that's just a reflection? Look at this beautiful man. Look at this beautiful man show up and save the day. Look at him. How majestic. The Masamune is looking pretty clean. Suge. Like amazing. It's going. Suge. Genesis. Oh. Genesis copy ka. Copy? Ningen no copy? Anjiru wa doko da? Koko de tatakatte ta hazu nan da ke do. Aitsu mo itta ka? Ah? Ima no dou yu imi da yo? Anjiru mo uragiri mono ni natta. So yu imi da. Ari e nai. Ore Anjiru no koto wa yoku shitte nda. Son na koto suru otoko janai.
there's some of these lines I'm hearing them with the original uh, Rick Gomez delivery and man Rick Gomez might have even done better than the Japanese Let's guy go! all right man you know what's funny every time I watch something for like YouTube or streaming or <laughs> Max's videos come on directly after that the dude that was so sick so sick right fully watching it and fully breaking it down I had uh, December can't come soon enough it's gonna be my graduation present right school is gonna be ending and I am gonna be done and reunion is gonna be out and I am just gonna play it to high heaven I'm gonna play it it'll be my ultimate graduation present I really can't wait